Hi everyone, this is Aiden and welcome to my house tour. When looking for an apartment, I was very clear that I wanted to design layout from scratch. Uh, eventually, I went with a 1,000 square foot resale condo that both allowed for and required major renovation. I was very blessed on this renovation journey with a great ID, Guo Feng from Studio Super Safari, as well as a fantastic developer. Nani from Shining Development, both without which uh, I wouldn't be able to build my dream home. After moving in for about three months and fully experiencing the apartment, I must say that I'm very pleased with the result. Through today's video, I hope to share with you some of the thinking behind my design as well as some of the vendors that I worked with for my interior fittings. If you currently are or are about to embark on your renovation journey, I really hope that today's video helps. Without further ado, let's begin. When you first reach the apartment, you'll be greeted with a gate carved with the word Jai. It's a double entendre, both referring to the direct translation of a boat, and also specifically for me, a way of life. The door is equipped with a digital lock from My Digital Lock. It comes with six different ways of activation, but I primarily use the fingerprint and passcode. The first zone of the apartment is the entry area, separated spatially by a step up and visually by a wall with a ripped glass Functionally, it physically separates the external from the internal and design-wise, invites you in without revealing too much. The step up brings you to the tea room. I gave it a cool Japanese sounding name, but in reality, it's a multi-purpose space that I use as a cat playground, an area for tea, and also for mahjong. Nested in a small hole is also this extremely aesthetic bespoke fridge from Samsung, which I use as a beverage fridge. The freezer compartment stores treats for myself and food for the boys. This sliding glass door from Osscreen does that perfectly. Resonating with the ripped glass you see upon entry, this six panel door actually comes without a bottom track and also features soft closing. It opens up to reveal the rest of the living space, which is segmented into three areas. The first is the bar, second being the living room, and third is an open kitchen dining concept. The bar houses my gin collection and is also where I make coffee and tea. It comes equipped with a wine chiller from Brand that can store about 40 bottles. This black countertop is a scented surface from a local company called Lian Hin, so I extended it from the usual bar counter 30cm to 45cm such that it could comfortably sit a laptop and double up as an additional work zone. I prefer staying home, so investing in a home bar makes a lot more sense for my lifestyle. Visually, it's the only dark brown area of the living space. Along with the brick tile feature wall, the bar acts as the focal point that helps to center the apartment visually. The living room is designed for comfort, or in my terms, couch potatoing whenever I have an off day. The sofa from Novena works great for me, especially because it's affordable and pretty much scratch resistant against the cats. So while the recommended sofa to TV ratio suggested that I get a 55-inch TV, uh, I eventually went with the 75-inch Samsung QN90A, which has so far provided an amazing cinematic experience from home thanks to its quantum matrix technology. While I think that majority of interior design rules would be reliable, I do think that it'll be better to pick your appliances and their sizes based on your individual lifestyle preferences uh, instead of what is technically right. The TV, along with the Dolby Atmos soundbar, really projects a fantastic audiovisual experience. I love to sing, so I made sure to equip my home setup with a karaoke system. After shopping around, I purchased a set from Powerhouse, and so far, all my guests have loved it. A step up leads to the dining area, effectively enveloping the living room into a sunken and contained space so it feels more cosy. The main feature of the dining area is this white marbled sintered surface from Lian Hin that visually connects the kitchen tabletop with the dining table. It's heat-proof and easy to clean. It's also naturally cooling, so Toro loves to sleep on it. The kitchen is fitted with appliances from Brent, including an induction hob and hood, a built-in dishwasher, and also a combination oven microwave. Due to the position of the hob, I needed an island hood, and Brent was one of the only few brands that offered it in a glass finish. I wanted to get majority of the bigger electrical appliances from a single brand and every retailer I went to actually recommended brand for its reliability and price so it became a clear choice. The kitchen fridge is from Samsung and this is where I store most of my fresh food. I cook whenever I can and kitchen appliances from Tfall, especially their Easy Fry Oven and Opti Grill, really make life much easier, especially since both are oil-free. 
If you want an open kitchen but actually enjoy cooking, then it's important to find out some of these cooking hacks to save you time from cleaning up all these oil stains. Uh, these appliances from Tfold really helped me save a lot of time. The door in the kitchen opens up to a laundry yard. While small, it stores a washer, dryer, both from brands, and also an automatic laundry rack from Goodwife, a local brand. The rack makes air drying clothes much easier, especially on rainy and humid days, given the additional functions like dual fan drying and UV disinfection. I'm really glad how the yard turned out because space is extremely tight, but I managed to squeeze in all the appliances that I needed. Convenience and powered by technology is what I really wanted for the apartment, so I'm glad everything worked out. The yard connects to the guest powder room, which is tiny but functional. I dress it up into a perfume counter so guests can try out some of my favourite scents. The apartment is divided into two segments. What you've seen so far is what I call the public segment of the house where all the hosting and hanging out happens. Beyond this door is the private segment of the apartment. The first zone you'll see is the walk-in wardrobe. On the right is an open wardrobe area which I designed as a transitional zone for clothes I've worn before but don't want to wash yet. Next to it is the vanity where I do all things grooming from skincare to hair and makeup. One design element I think is quite functional is this cabinet top which doubles up as an ironing surface. The walk-in wardrobe leads to the study which was designed to mirror the graduation from light to dark brown as seen in the living area. The cabinetry that you see is actually inspired from a YouTube video that I saw online uh, from an apartment in China that used cabinets to mimic the ascension of mountains. So I managed to find a local company called A-Star Furnishings that was willing to customize the size of every cabinet unit in order to create this staircase effect. It happened to work out great because my cats love to climb up and down the cabinets. They also serve as an appliance hub. I firmly believe that every appliance needs its own home. My Samsung Jetbot and Bespoke Jet live comfortably in their respective homes. I also use this area to prepare for my shoots. The Samsung air dresser allows me to dry clean and disinfect clothes before and after shoots. Next to it is a steaming station to ensure that my outfits are crease free before I head out for shoots. So this is kind of embarrassing because I haven't had the time to set up my workstation properly. But in the study is where I do my Zoom calls lives, script reading, and other planning work. The work desk, which allows for height adjustments, is from Everdesk, while the chair, featuring an ergonomic design, is from Ogotune. I'll probably be setting up my workstation properly sometime in the future, so do look out for that. The side door in the hallway leads to the master toilet. I went with a clean design accented with space grey toilet accessories. A functional decision for the toilet was to go with this set of aluminium cabinets, also from A-Star Furnishings. At my previous place, the wooden cabinets in the toilet started rotting because of exposure to moisture over the years. So this time round, uh, I searched high and low to make sure I could find a non-wooden option. So I'm really thankful that I found A-Star Furnishings. The countertop is also from Lian Hain and interestingly, it's cut from the exact same piece that was used for the kitchen and dining table. So this actually creates a visual connection between the two spaces. The final door leads to the master bedroom, which I intentionally kept less cluttered. I only use this area for resting, so the room was designed to be simpler, anchored with a single bed with a wooden bed frame I got from Taobao. That kind of sums up the entire tour of my house, but at this point, I also like to mention some other vendors that I got my interior fittings from. All the fans are from KDK, a trusted Japanese brand known for its reliability and durability. It also comes with a 5 setting ceiling light, which fits into the lighting plan of my apartment perfectly. All the air conditioning is from Mitsubishi Electric and I got them from Gain City, along with some of the other electrical appliances in my apartment. Gain City is my most trusted electric appliance retailer and I'm pretty sure that if I need anything else in the future, it'll be the first place that I check out. And finally, all the down lighting you see is from Vlux. The lighting really sets the mood for the house and it's great that intensity can be tweaked for different vibes and all of this can be done remotely via an app. The kinetic switches can be configured as and when based on my preferences and holding down the switch can also quickly change the lighting intensity. This brings us to the end of the house tour and I sincerely hope that for those embarking on a renovation journey, this video was helpful. Before I started acting, I actually worked as a UX product manager. So when designing this apartment, I really wanted every single decision to be backed by use cases from my own lifestyle while complying with a design aesthetic that I preferred. So evidently, this is uh, Japanese inspired, but I would actually call it more of a Japanese oriental design. 
So one tip for new home owners would be to map out your own user journey to better visualize how you would use the different parts of the house prior to commenting to a design. Uh, at the end of the day, I feel like livability and functionality are as important as aesthetics. Overall, I'm very happy with how the apartment turned out and every single day when I go to work, I just feel like this apartment is a major motivation for me to work even harder. Subsequently, when I have more time, I'll be creating more videos to share about the renovation journey as well as some of the thinking behind this apartment. If you like what you see today, if you like uh, the aesthetic of the apartment, then definitely do subscribe and keep a lookout for more videos. Thank you so much for watching.